Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you become an expert primary maths teacher so that all your children become fluent, creative and confident with their maths. This is the seventh video on teaching maths to children aged six to seven and in this video I'm going to explain how we help children to learn to deeply understand and work with fractions. In this video I'll explain why we teach fraction in different ways to the ways we'd use if children were older and I'll explain how we give children a really deep sense of halves, thirds and quarters in different ways. And then I'll explain how we use the understanding we've developed to help children identify mixed numbers up to 10, to begin to add and subtract with fractions and to begin to find fractions of amounts. Right, let's get started. So you'll see some teachers teaching with counting sticks and positioning fractions in between marks on counting sticks. I'm not going to recommend that for six to seven year olds because many six to seven year olds are still working in a very concrete world and they haven't yet developed an understanding of the number line, which is a continuous measure. I'm going to introduce the number line very deliberately and carefully in the next year of maths teaching. And some children aren't yet very good at working in the abstract, so we need to give them a multi-sensorial experience of fraction at this level if we want to make sure all our children are going to understand it and thrive with it. So the first thing I recommend you do is chat to the teachers who've taught your children before. What did they do to introduce them to halves, thirds and quarters? Make sure you make some links back to that work. You may discover some really fabulous things like these magnetic fruit in early years classrooms. Let's just have a look at them. There's a whole apple here. There's an apple that splits into halves. There's one that splits into thirds. Really beautiful, wonderfully made. And there's this one that splits into quarters. So build from what they've already done. And then I would suggest, before you really get going with your teaching for this year group, you do some work with dough because it's so powerful for diagnosing understanding. So we can say to the children, can you split your dough in half? And then you can weigh it with balance scales to check they've got it right. And they could make a little snowman or a monster like that, but the head's a bit big. So what about if we split it into thirds and made the head one third of the dough and the body two thirds of the dough, would that look better? And splitting some dough into thirds is a really big challenge. They have to deeply understand that thirds must all be the same size and it's really difficult to check. So they want to do lots of checking using their own sense of feeling weight. They can check using the balance scales, two at a time, not all together, unless you've got some very sophisticated balance scales. And then we can talk about two thirds of the dough going into the body of the snowman and one third into the head. And well, the head still looks a bit big, doesn't it? What about if we split the dough into quarters? We'd have to split it in half, split it in half again. And if we made the body three quarters, again, we need to check it very carefully. Three quarters into the body, one quarter into the head. And now we're starting to get something that looks a bit more like a snowman, apart from the colour. <laughs> so you've quickly got a large chunk of a day of craft out of this and you can have those discussions in detail with children as you wander around the classroom. And it's a truly powerful way to learn about fractions with children of this age because it's a multi-sensorial experience. Children are getting the experience through their sense of touch, through their visual assessment of what's going on and through the sense of displacement, of weight. And they're making connections between all those things, which is such a powerful way to learn for children who are not yet ready to abstract and manipulate information in their working memory. So once we've got that sense of fraction established, we want to also develop it with area, with circles and with length. So with area, you might have different sheets of paper and if you want this to go further, you can cut all these in half before you start and you're going to get twice as many sets. And if you fold one colour in half and cut them, you're going to get your halves. And if you fold another colour into four, and it is really good to go through this with the children and help them with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
you're going to get your quarters and then you can cut those and label them. You've then got your whole, your halves and your quarters. And I'll come back and show you how we'll use those in a moment. What you didn't have there was thirds. You can create them by creating like a tree color with vertical lines, but then you're really just splitting length. So that brings us on to your strips of paper. I just found these lying around or pipe cleaners or lollipop sticks where you've got holes and you need to fold them in half. And you can try and fold them into thirds and children can have a reasonable go at that and find out how tricky it is. And you can fold them into quarters and you can mark some of them out with different fractions of lengths and you can use them to measure. So you could discover that your piece of paper is two thirds of a strip long, for example. And of course you can do that with pipe cleaners and lollipop sticks or whatever you've got as well. The final representation, it's really useful if children come across, is a representation in circles. I usually use my pizza fraction fun. I've got some paper circles, but paper circles are hard to get just now. You may have magnetic circles that are in fractions or something else. So you can show your halves, your thirds and your quarters. And it's only really circles that bring out this very specific shape of a third. And that's a shape that children should learn to recognise as being a third at some stage. It's going to be very useful to them. You don't have to use all of those visual representations, but you want to do something with dough so they get the experience with weight and you want something with area and something with length. If you teach a mixed year group, you can come back to different representations in different years to make each year fresh and exciting for your class. So now we've got those representations established, we want to start to talk about mixed numbers. So if we're measuring the width of our desk, might it be one and a third paper strips? How many pizzas have I got here? How many sheets of paper have I got here? We're not looking for a formal abstract treatment of mixed numbers here. We're looking for children to be able to recognise them because they can recognise halves, quarters and thirds. They should be able to recognise two and a third. But we want to give them the chance to do that and the chance to work on fractions in that wider context of larger numbers rather than just as individual fractions. And as soon as they can do that, we can start to work on addition and subtraction. So we could ask questions like what's a half add a quarter? And there's lots of rich discussion in that. You need to deal with the fact that the half is two quarters, which is something we want to refresh and make sure children are comfortable with as part of that journey. What would one and a half add one and a half be? Well, we don't expect children to work in the abstract. We'd expect that question to be in the context of paper circles or these or pizzas, and then we'd expect them to be able to puzzle it out. Some children will be able to work in the abstract, but we don't want to push our class on yet because some won't. And it's much more powerful to get them all working with concrete objects because their understanding is going to be so much deeper. What about if I had a whole pizza and I ate a third of a pizza? How could we build that problem with the pizza parts? And what would the answer be? These are the kinds of questions that you want to spend plenty of time on and get children explaining how they puzzled out their answers to each other and to you. And then finally, it's time to start to work on finding fractions of amounts. Now at this age, all problems should be with heavy apparatus. So I'm talking about maybe some Duplo like this. So if we're trying to find half of eight, children can really break that in half and see they've got two parts the same size and count how many there are. And they can feel the weight. They deeply know those two halves are the same size as each other. And they could have a go at splitting those into quarters because they've got such a deep visual understanding, multisensorial understanding of fraction. And with small numbers of objects, we can start to have a go at a third and two thirds and three quarters of an amount as well. If your class are flying, there's nothing to stop you going into much larger numbers if it's concrete and they can see it. So for example, with our counting beads here, we could say, what's half of a hundred? Because we can actually fold the counting beads in half and see it precisely. That's accessible. And we could even talk about what's 
a quarter of a hundred or maybe even three quarters of a hundred. If you want to extend the children, that's how we do it in ways that take them all with us because they're going to be able to see those folded lengths just as they saw them with the paper strips. And you can deliberately make those links. So in this video, we've explored how we help children develop a really deep understanding of halves, thirds and quarters and how they can then use that understanding to extend their knowledge of fractions up beyond one so they can cope with one and two thirds or two and a half and they can start to add and subtract with fractions but only when they have objects and manipulatives to work with. If individuals can clearly go beyond that because they're clearly imagining what's going on in their heads that's fine but we don't need to do that with whole classes of children and it's usually unwise to try. And once we've got the representations and the imagery securely established we can start to apply the same imagery to finding fractions of amounts but we want to be using real objects with a substantial amount of weight. We need to make sure they are clearly linking the imagery they've already developed to what they're trying to do as they move their objects. So if you're trying to find a third of an amount you could use a pizza cut into thirds and make sure you put the same number of objects in each part of the pizza. Fraction is definitely a maths topic that sits across other topics in maths certainly into measure which we'll be coming to in a couple of videos time but also across art craft design and so on if you as a teacher are precisely clued up as to what you're looking for then your teaching can become incredibly efficient and loads of fun because you can focus on those enjoyable connected tasks the next video in this series will be in the teaching art of getting children to unpack their own thinking which is really difficult to learn to do, especially when you're dealing with 30 children at a time, or maybe more. But it's incredibly important in maths that every child is expressing their own thinking. After that video, I'll be moving on to the applied maths and into some of the other aspects of teaching children this age. I hope you'll join me for the rest of the series. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet so that you can find it again. And if you think it's useful, if you've got time to recommend it to your colleagues or to anyone else who you think will find it useful, that would be fantastic. If you've any questions for me or comments on the video, please do post them underneath. I live stream on this channel every Sunday morning at nine o'clock British time. And you can also find me and ask me any questions and find all the videos and resources in the Facebook group, which is expert primary maths teaching. Let's create a generation of children who all deeply understand maths and love their maths. Bye for now.